so today's tactic video is a little bit different we're not just going to give you a tactic you download then you break the game at the end of it i will give you a tactic that you can download that kind of breaks the game but to start with we're going to look at the defensive side of football the principles of football per se not just football manager 2024 and then you can apply these principles to your own tactic that in theory will shore up your defense and make your team a lot more successful sound good let's go Okie dokie karaoke, the five areas of today's videos which is going to help you set up your tactic is as follows. Defensive principles, we're going to look at uh, kind of in depth, but we're going to break it down nice and easy for you. How to apply that in Football Manager 2024 and then creating your match plan. Because once you've got your tactic, there's a lot more work to do. We get that match plan in place. We have that in-game defensive management. And then more importantly... We analyze the results. So I'll show you the form that I've got throughout the season in this save, which is as follows. It started off a little bit bumpy, and this has been a tweak tactic throughout. So going from the Man City game, or even before that, let's go back to Burnley. The first game in the Premier League, it wasn't a great result, to be fair, but we tweaked and we followed it up with one, two, three, four clean sheets on the bounce against some pretty big teams. Arsenal, Brighton, Man City, all in the Prem and Bournemouth in the Carabao Cup. But we were not scoring goals. So obviously that's continued to tweak and tweak and tweak. And Brighton onwards, we started scoring goals. Admittedly, I changed the formation slightly. And from then, we've gone on a little bit of a run, to be fair, scoring some goals. And that uptake of form has come from analysing the results and looking exactly where we're doing well and where we're doing poorly. And that is such an important part of creating a tactic and i'd urge you all to do that and that's going to be a separate video on its own is the analyzing i'll go through it at the end just to show you exactly some of the key findings but for your own tactic that's something you kind of need to do with your own parameters what you see is important so going back to those five things for today's video let's start off with the defensive principles and we'll jump into that and number one is delay we want to delay the ability of the opposition getting forward so we want to prevent that ball from being played forward quickly pressing in the right areas and if we're smart with this if we are pressing in the right areas which is that's kind of the key thing i want you to focus on here is pressing the right areas we block the other team from making the key passes pressing is reducing the space in front of the opposition's attack so obviously we're talking high press and we all know that a football manager a high press is successful and it's not something you'd consider a super backs to the wall defensive mentality but really defense starts right at the top of the pitch with your striker or strikers but it's doing it in a calm and controlled way not a rash press it's controlled and pressing in the right areas if you can do that in a coordinated manner with your strikers or your wide attackers forcing the defenders to make risky runs or play lofted passes by blocking those passing lanes you can get the ball back a lot higher up the pitch to control the game so that is delaying that's the first principle of defending and i'll say you now once we've gone through these six areas we'll apply each one individually to a tactic and i'll show you what i do for each area number two is closing the gap now this is reducing the space behind the press so if you've got your front players pressing the ball to try and win it back you do not want a massive gap behind you because that's where players can tear you apart we've just seen the man city man united game this week perfect example john stones picking up that gap in behind where literally man united's midfield was invisible so see it is this way the reference is always the ball the man that is on the ball you've got the nearest player pressing but the next in line is key. It's so key to this process. They need to take the lead and cover the player who's going to the ball, making sure the passing lanes aren't there to be taken advantage of. And then number three is compactness. Does what it says in the tin. As a unit, as a formation, and this can be any formation you want, they have to be compact. Horizontal, vertical distances between players in the same unit, such as strikers, midfield, and defenders, They've got to be tight. You've got to make sure that there aren't gaps in your positions. And the heat map is your friend for this one. And playing compact is very important when we've talked about the previous ones of delay and closing the gap. Because we're looking at our forwards and our midfield players who potentially have pushed forward, press in. The recovery run that they make is just as important. Because they need to get back behind the ball and cover their teammates. Number four on the list, probably the most important, is the balance. And when I said heat map is key, it genuinely is. It's one of the best images you can look at to see how your formation post-game, it works on that pitch. Heat map, pass map, 
analyze them all. And it's the type of thing you can see in the game. For example, if your left back is pressing, is your left center back covering? Are they making sure that any mistakes that do happen, they are stood there? And then additionally, is that right center back providing the balance that we all shifting across in a nice confined unit to make sure there's no gaps that the opposition could take advantage of. Number five is patience. And this area is something I struggle with and probably a lot of you do. We're kind of taught in football manager that high tempo pressing is the way to win a game. And don't get me wrong, you play some really nice attacking football, but for this purpose, defending is very difficult. If we allow our players to take their time, consider their options, they're more likely to make a good decision. It's as simple as that. Mistakes will, will always be there as football manager. But if we produce a team that's disciplined, has got the patience, they get in good positions, that backup is there just in case mistakes are made, we're going to be a lot more defensively solid. And the final one is predictability. If we put together this tactic where we're really hard to break down, ultimately we're going to notice patterns in the opposition. They're going to become predictable. They're going to look at ways that they can attack us. And then we can tweak and adapt within the game as part of the match plan to make sure we nullify that predictability. So they are the defensive principles that I put in this video. You might disagree. Comment down below if you think there's anything that I've missed out there. Google it. Just Google defensive principles in football and you'll find a raft of all these different areas that you can apply to your own game. These are the ones that make most sense to me. These are the ones I find the most accessible and we can apply to the game we all love and play, Football Manager 24. So next step is taking those areas, taking your tactic and applying them. So let's do that. Okay, so we're in the tactic screen and this is the formation that we're going to start with as a blank canvas to tweak into a defensive formation. It's a 4-3-3. I'm using over in my Denmark save. It's incredibly successful. It's incredibly tick attacker attacking high pressing everything i love about it the roles i absolutely adore but it's not one that's going to suit us defensively so what we're going to do is create a version of this and this applies to any formation that you can do in the whole of football manager whatever you're looking at right now we can tweak it to be defensive and this is what we're going to do we're going to create a new one over here uh load the tactic in fact we'll copy a b tactic number two is defending one this is the one that i've created but it's pointless me showing you that just yet i'm going to show you how to create it so we've got a b tactic there and a b tactic there so this is the one we'll tweak so to start with at the back keep things as simple as we can don't over complicate it if you've got wing backs on support and attack let's just bring them back to a defensive mentality and the center backs perfect center back defend let's keep those sweeper keeper on support we'll drop him back to defend i don't like the goalkeeper role so we'll leave that as it is coming into the midfield a half back on defend is probably my favorite role of fm24 at the moment i just love it and mazala a great role but it's far too attacking in a similar vein we'll go for the carolero it will shuttle across and offer us some defensive stability where the mazala doesn't and the roman playmaker is far too attacking we're going to drop that to a center mid on support to start with a nice vanilla role and talking about vanilla roles out wide inverted winger and inside forward are going to become wide midfielders on an automatic row and i'll tell you why the wide midfielder is one of the very few roles in football manager that gives you a blank canvas we can create whatever we want out there and the automatic role if you didn't know it links to the team mentality so if we went attacking you'd have a wide midfielder on attack if we went on defend it would drop down and the color as you can see we're red there if we go attacking it's green I wonder if you got balanced. Does it go all? It goes blue. There we go. So that's a supportive role. As you can see right there, blue support, red defend, green attack. But we want to keep it as balanced. I like that. That's a nice midfield four, a nice defensive four. The halfback is integral. I could quite easily put a second striker up there, but that is no defensive tactic. And up top, there's only one. Pressing forward on support. I feel defensive pressing forward. It comes back a little bit too far. Support it works well attacking okay so we've done that you've taken your tactic which was this one the lovely 4-3-3 attacking and you're in the middle of the game and you want to sure things up and get defensive all you do is click on that and all the players go into roles they're relatively natural at you're not going to be recruiting anybody who's brilliant wing back on support but he's terrible defending i think it should work well for you and it's quite universal, whatever formation you play in. So let's start working our way through those principles and how we're going to tweak this into the defensive beast it's going to be. And start off 
it's delay. And if you remember, that's the ability to prevent the ball from being moved forward quickly, pressing in the right areas. And the right areas for us is going to be up top. So, Mr. Brown, we're going to ask you to press more often, which your role naturally does. But we're also going to get you to mark the centre-backs, just to sit up there as close as you can to those centre-backs to stop those passing lines and to hopefully break up the play as early as possible. Okay, coming into the midfield, these are very, very important positions. Nakamba, we're going to ask him to do a couple of things. Take fewer risks, we're going to keep. Cross left often, shoot less often, that can go away. Tackle harder, we'll keep on this one because it is a pressing area and marking tighter. This is where we do want to make sure that we're nullifying the centre midfielders from the play. So when the defenders or the wing backs have got the ball, my pressing forward is running around like an absolute wasp with a picnic. And the midfielders are both going to be marking tight and triggering the press. And of course, taking fewer risks, basically making this a risk free area. So these boys in the centre of the park are going to be sitting on the centre midfielders. And this is where we're pressing in the right areas. Out wide, same story. Mark tighter, tackle harder and sit narrower. And I'll tell you why we're going to do that in a second. Over here, we're going to ask them to sit narrower, mark tighter, and tackle harder. Click on OK. And that's our midfield defensive unit done to a certain degree. And we're going to delay the opposition from attacking. See this as different units. Our first unit is the pressing forward and these four boys across the middle here. The wide midfielders, I'm not asking to press an awful lot. We're just going to tackle harder and mark a little bit tighter. These boys in the middle are going to be sat really much on the toes of the midfielders and then the halfback who's going to sit in behind well he's not going to be doing any pressing whatsoever we're going to trigger press less often and ease off tackles and i'll tell you why we're going to do that in a second as well hit okay and the reason i've done ease off tackles is moving on to number two in the defensive principles and that is depth reduce the space behind the pressure and players so imagine now we've got our first wave of attack and they're pushing forward to kind of nullify the central midfield attack to win the ball back. My halfback, I want him to sit there. If he's going to close down and be a little bit reckless and not be patient, all the principles we've looked at, is a waste of a position. So he's going to sit there and easing off tackles is a wonderful, wonderful play instruction I've started using this year. So in theory, all it's doing is asking him to be really composed in his decision making. Consider the ramifications of an aggressive mistimed tackle and instead do them in a more timely fashion. I think that's absolutely perfect and we're going to be using that elsewhere on the pitch. Now whilst we're on the principle of depth I think it's important we take a look at the defensive shape because at the moment there's a high press and a high defensive line which isn't going to work. We're going to drop it to a mid block so this is going to be the high intensity action area of the pitch but I still want a high defensive line. If we drop back too much the gaps in between the units, the central midfielders, the defenders and the striker become far too massive gaps in between. We can't have that. So a high defensive line, the mid block, mid block makes it really compact, which as we know is one of the areas of our defensive principles. And whilst we're in here looking at point number one of the principles, delaying it, we are going to trigger the press much more often. We're not going to prevent the short goalkeeper distribution because that is something I'm happy in doing. And we are going to ask them to get stuck in in areas. Now, as a caveat, you should know here, team instructions are trumped by player instructions. And in turn, those player instructions are trumped by player traits. So if I ask any of these players to tackle hard, if I come in here for Sambi Lekong and I say to him, look, mate, I want you to ease off tackles, he will ease off tackles because that overrides the team instructions okay number three then is the compactness and i've already done one of those already we've asked the wide midfielders to sit narrower and what we're going to do then is ask the wing backs to do exactly the same so we're going to ask them to sit narrower we're going to ask you to sit a bit narrow also hit okay and that's going to create a nice compact nature of these positions but also of course in possession we can ask them to be fairly narrow and of course if we're playing compact these two overlapping instructions completely nullify that so we're going to remove those and whilst we're doing this as well we're also going to drop the tempo all the way down and passing directness is much shorter as well we're going to make sure that our pace is very slow as we're playing compact football we're not going to be hoofing the ball long we're going to keep it nice and short and of course 
we're going to time waste a little bit. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. So that's compactness. We've got a nice tight unit of four lines, the halfback and the striker up top. For the forward and midfield players, the recovery run is just as important. So we are going to get this pressing forward to drop back a little bit more. And with those centre backs, we're asking him to mark. That will happen naturally because if these are pushing forward, he is always going to be on that last line of attack or the first line of defence, whichever you want to call it. He's going to be set there like a little buzzy wasp at a picnic. And then out wide with the wide midfielders and the wing backs, we're basically locking down these lines to allow the full backs to prevent the wingers from getting into dangerous areas. These guys are going to mark the full backs and the wing backs we've got here are going to sit there and nullify any of the work from the wingers. And of course, we're going to do one more thing here with these. Let's get into this tackle hard. Let's remove that to ease off tackles. It doesn't mean they're not going to tackle. They're just going to do it in a more defined manner. And I think making sure that they stay in position, they don't rush out making rash tackles, is perfect for that role. Which is also why I'm going to ask him to trigger the press less often. And once again, it doesn't mean they're not going to do it as much. They probably will in reality. But it's more so they're going to wait for the right opportunity to engage. So hitting OK. We're not going to be running up here, getting out of position. We're going to stay back in a defensive unit and do it properly. The other two ones cross less often and shoot less often. We can get rid of those, to be fair. We don't need them. And I'm going to do exactly the same over here. Cross less often, shoot less often. And instead of tackle harder, ease off tackles and ease off the press means that these boys aren't going to be out of position. Let these boys in front who are marking tighter and tackle harder. The initial press of that delay and then we've got the depth in behind to make sure that these are covering, they're never going to be out of position, but they're compact all the way throughout. Which moves us really nicely onto number four, which is balance. I don't really need to touch anything here because the balance across this team is perfect. And that is something you will do in your own heat maps, in your passing maps, all those things within game, which we'll look at shortly. But for now, I'm really happy with the balance of this formation. And what I'll say, and this is super important to remember, a formation is just a start in position. I'm just asking these boys to start off here. The concepts that we implement will come from the movement and how the players interact with the play. So they could be pulled left, right and center against any formation we come up against. But ultimately all I can do is set this formation up to start with. Everything else, well that's just the joy of football in it. Anything can bloody happen. Right, point number five then, discipline or patience we'll call it. So discipline, first thing we want to do is ask the team to be a lot more disciplined and whilst we're in here, we're going to take off, work the ball into the box. That doesn't suit the way that we're going to play in a balanced mentality. And do you know what? I think that's it. In possession, that's how we're going to set up defensively. In transition, in terms of discipline and patience, we're going to hold our shape when we get the ball and of course when we lose it, we're going to regroup. We're going to get back into position in a disciplined manner, in a balanced manner, to stay there. And one more thing, we're going to distribute to fullbacks and centre-backs. I've said this many times before, I hate it when there's just one option, because it does become very predictable. And of course, the goalkeeper is going to slow it down in a gentle manner and give the ball out to anybody at the back four. Perfect. And the other areas of discipline and patience we've already done. Ease off tackles, that is the ultimate thing I would give you to take home today, making sure that they are going to take their time and make the right decisions. And then the final part is predictability. And ultimately, this is kind of out of our hands because it depends what we come up against on the day. So the predictability of the opposition and how they attack us. Are they wingers? Are they central? This one is where the in-game management really comes in. Now, there are things you can do. For example, you could trap inside or outside if you think you are strong in the box or your weaknesses are maybe out wide. There's lots of things you can do that. Even if you've got pacey defenders, you can step up or drop off more. We're going to leave it as it is for now and kind of like tweak it depending on the opposition. So that is the tactic, 99% done. There's one thing that I've added where those wins came from to tweak this tactic that gave it unrivaled success. And I'll show you that when we jump into the game now and how, how it's done so well for me. Okay, so we've got a tactic as a defensive unit and we've got our original version. Let's hope you've done exactly the same now. You've gone away and you've got your perfect tactic and then a defensive version of it. Get them nice and saved. And then you just get into games and you're tweaking and you're working what works and what doesn't. If you do sim games and you want to create a match plan, I suggest doing one for one nil, add a scenario and do something like if you are drawing in say the second half, the 45 to 70 or maybe the 70 to 75, then you can switch it up to the attacking formation 
and hit that and then of course at the 70th minute it drops back to your defensive one it basically allows you a 20 minute window to go at the opposition to hopefully get a goal and then shut up shop again and that does do the one nil that's all i do to be fair with you but as we're playing the games the match plan well that's going to happen quite organically in game so before we jump into that villa game to show you some in-game defensive management and what you can do let's just take a look at the schedule to see how this tactic has grown the Burnley game we didn't do much Arsenal Brighton Man City this was the formation it worked really well and then the Palace and Chelsea game these two are good teams in football manager this year and only conceding one isn't that bad away from home and home not so bad Brighton a bit of a disaster but then we tweaked and this is what I've done and the last bit we're going to add to the tactic come up here and hit play for set pieces all my days for defensive team it is the way to get those goals we're going to play for the corners for the free kicks the throw-ins to make sure we can get up there get that goal and then shut up shop again oh and from that we literally got a few goals west ham newcastle fulham it worked fantastic i'm pretty certain the newcastle game was the one that we got it from a set piece let's take a look it is indeed. Free kick comes over, ball comes out, we're still defending back and Doherty, edge of the bot, makes it 1-0 and then we shut up shop. And look at the stats of this game. There's a few things to look at for this game, first of all. The performances. Everyone's rocking up with a really, really good performance. Over here, we've got 95% pass completion and 887 passes. We're like bloody Barcelona. It's such a good tactic and 68% of the ball. Nuts. Secondly, that heat map. Oh my days, you've got the back four, 29, 5, 4 and 12. In front of that, 45, 6, 28 and 30. Those four lines, or those two lines of four even, not four lines, I'm, I'm, I'm not drunk, promise you, are perfect. There's, there's compact, there's no gaps there at all. And the half back, number 13, is just a free row. He sat there, easing off tackles, patiently mopping up play as our pressing forwards run around like a wasp at a picnic. So let's jump into that game and hopefully we'll do all right. Okay, it's game day. And one thing I will say now, your assistant manager will come to you and say, change everything just as the game's gonna kick off. Don't listen to him. Opposition instructions in particular, do not add a single one. You created your tactic, which is balanced, is perfect. Don't get players pulled out of position at the last minute. So team selection, we've got the team lined up. We know exactly what we're doing. Let's get into this game and see how it goes. Q losing 4-0. So this game finished nil nil and to be fair it was a drab affair but i want to show you a few highlights in this game of where we defended well set pieces this year are quite overpowered and defensively we do really well this is the pressing areas going forward and the boy sat back just to mop up that pressure we're defensive all the time standing up there great tackle by kabori there i think if that was a rash challenge it would be one nil certainly from a penalty and we clear the area very well indeed all within the first five minutes. 10 minutes in, it's a throw into us out wide. Our strikers come all the way back and Bartley's got a nice bit of space to move into. But as he passes it, he drops back. If this was a Roman playmaker, he'd be up here looking for the pass, which we can't have. I want him to sit back here to offer an option. Even if it goes up there, we lose the ball, we get our shape back. We get a nice back four. The back four here with our half back and the striker sat there. So this is a nice way to show how we soak up the pressing in the right areas. Our strikers pressing the ball, waiting for some mistakes here. We're marking the centre midfielders here, the six and the 44. They've got no space at all. And the centre back's going to come through. And McGinn then through to Watkins, who's pressed well. Well, we got lucky there, let's be honest. But not bad defending up the top end of the pitch. Second half, 74th minute now. We've nullified everything. We're coming forward through in the camber. Doty on the ball. This is where we kind of need to nick a goal through the set pieces. But we're playing the ball very nicely. Nakamba, terrible mistake. But we still got cover yet again. If this was Rash, we'd be all over the place. And he's just covering him now, pushing him wide. That was really nice defending then, as opposed to diving in, just following him to push him into an area where he's not going to score from. Pressing high up the pitch again. Louise on the ball. We're hoping they're going to make a mistake. They rarely do, to be fair. But Douglas Louise coming forward. Zaniola. There's always men there. The man in the middle, the 28, cut across so nicely there. And Watkins should have scored, to be fair, shouldn't he? But there's two men marking him to put him off. And it finished nil-nil. We didn't play well. This is probably one of our worst performances. Decent possession of 58%. We got lots of passes in there. Our shape 
wasn't that good to be fair um we're a little bit pulled all over the place but i think it was the formation we come up against we've not played this one yet a 4-2-4 so maybe i don't know i could have done a bit more for the front four players there to see if we could nullify those at the back but ultimately we got another clean sheet and if we now go back to the league table like it it's insane how well the season's going for us now we are luton who as the season preview says we're 800 to 1 i've not made a single signing whatsoever and if we come over to the goals conceded we're down here five goals conceded in 11 games two against burnley which is in the first game and since then just liverpool chelsea and palace we've only scored three by the way but that's going to be i think part of this we're in 13th if we were to finish there i take that all day long so the final point to cover now we're doing so well but you need to analyze everything to work out what's working and what isn't and this is what we need to do and of course you all know the place to go for that is the data hub head up here team team performance and you can set whatever you want to appear i've just done some of the relevant ones that we're going to cover today so defensive efficiency to start with is how efficient we are we've got a quiet defense and impenetrable we're probably one of the best to be fair we've shoot we get 10 against us every game so let's go to team defender first of all we're conceding 0.45 goals a game which is amazing xg against is 1.13 which is surprising that's quite a big difference there to be fair 27 tackles we're winning 80 percent of those in oh here we go 3.45 blocks interceptions of 18 that's not so bad i'll take that all day long airily i feel we're doing well we are so we're strong ahead and we're winning like over 50 percent of our headers headers attempt so we're not having to attempt a lot okay so we're stopping the balls coming in which is interesting possession wise we are very reliable in possession and we rarely lose the ball which i'll take all day long and then finally passing lots of passing and accurate our pass completion rate is ridiculous simply because we're so slow and patient with what we do let's go into the premier league then and look at the team stats just to see if there is anything that we're good at that we're not good at that we could be a lot better at possession we're doing good at head is one we're lowest by 100 or 70 i should say i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing the percentage of them win is 51 percent. so there's not many crosses coming in against us we're winning them we're above average with or sevens sevens in terms of the headers but nobody's crossing the ball against us which is a good thing we're not allowing them the opportunities when they're coming out wide they can't get the ball in that's brilliant next up is possession one we're bottom again and by some distance so we're not winning possession that much so easing off tackles and allowing them to have the ball and not diving in there is almost giving us the opportunity to say come on just come at us and we'll clear the ball as and when it comes in and the final one which i find fascinating is headers lost and headers lost per game we're we're smashing that 12 we lose per game whereas Burnley are losing 38 per game we don't lose many headers at all oh i could geek out on this all day long so as promised there's going to be a download to this tactic down below head on over to the discord there's lots more tactical chat over there we've started defensive simply because football manager 24 is leakier than a dodgy plumber's kitchen i think you're going to get a few little tweaks from this which will help your tactic hopefully and if you are new to our channel hit that subscribe button FM24, we're hoping it's going to be a good year for us. We'd love you to be along for the journey. Hit that button and watch this video next. Catch you soon. Take care.